Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sean Purgal. I'm an osteopath and today I want to speak with you about how the rich spend their money and how the poor spend their money. What do they buy? How come the rich become more rich all the time and the poor become more poor all the time? And what helped me to become wealthier as years go by? I want to give to you is very important if you follow this tip this alone can make you rich and successful if you apply it correctly it is there are books written on just this topic you must follow this if you want to become wealthy there is no other choice but to follow this tip for and this is a very simple tip you have to understand the differences between assets and liabilities. Assets and liabilities. The rich buy assets, the poor buy liabilities. It's very, very simple. Assets, generally speaking, are things that make you money. Liabilities are things that make you lose money. If you understand this simple concept, that said, you can become rich and wealthy just by applying this. How? I, I give you an example. Anytime I want to spend a major amount of money on something, I will ask myself always, and you should ask yourself as well, will this expense generate income for me or is it just for pure expense uh, that will not generate any money for me and many times when I honestly look at it and when I see that it's not it doesn't have the potential to uh, to make money for me I will not spend it on that most of the things I spend on are the things that generate money for me for example when I just a sort of business. I had a friend, a physiotherapist. He had spent $300,000 on renovating his clinic. Fully chic and very nice, nice walls and everything. I told him, this doesn't make you any money. Nobody comes to you because you have a renovated clinic. And he went bankrupt and not, still his employee, he never did business anymore because he he had to declare bankruptcy and he was very upset. He's afraid of opening a business. But I spend my money on things that generate money. Laser machine, IFC machines, traction decompression tables, uh, marketing, continuing education programs for myself to improve myself. Business. Business is the number one asset you can buy uh, to make you money. More than stocks, more than real estate, more than anything else. Business is the best asset. All, everything I make, I put back into the business. Actually, I registered National Academy of Osteopathy in Canada as a non-profit school. Means I don't take even one dollar out of it. All the money goes back to it to expand the college, to expand the profession and help other projects that I do. For example, I, I founded Osteopathic Chronic Pain Clinics of Canada in September 2017 in Toronto from one clinic. Now, three years later, we have 333 clinics in 30 countries. This week, we opened four, uh, four clinics, two of them in uh, South Africa and two in Ontario, Canada. Uh, and all the expenses of running the, uh, it's a non-profit uh, clinic, all the expenses of running it is covered by my school, uh, my three schools, uh, because I don't take any money of it. Every money that this clinic makes, I give back to the manual osteopaths who work there, who they are all my students. This is how I get to uh, expand the profession by making my students wealthy, others get attracted and come and study, and my go lifelong goal may be achieved in my lifetime. My goal is to ensure every town with a population of 100,000 people have at least a manual osteopath who hopefully is my graduate, my student working there because osteopathy does wonders in treating uh, chronic pain and I want everybody around the world have access to this 
beautiful, wondrous, miraculous healthcare. We treat last resort cases, cases others cannot treat, we treat. And this requires unique, innovative way to expand the profession and that's what we did. Before we came along, there was no manual osteopath in Nunavut, Northwest Territory, Yukon, Alaska, Hawaii, Prince Edward Island, Newfoundland and Labrador, uh, Tanzania, Island of Macau, Bermuda, and so many other places, Trinidad and Tobago, so many places now have manual osteopaths thanks to uh, us. And for this, I have to create uh, successful manual osteopaths. That's what, we, that's what makes us different from other schools. We even get other manual osteopaths graduated from other schools registered with us just to learn from my business lectures. Uh, because uh, you need, doesn't matter how good of a clinician you are, if you're not good in business, you will not, you will not uh, make a good income. Uh, this is just a, a common sense. You have to know all the laws of the business to be uh, to be good at it to make uh, to make money. It's very simple on, uh, as that. So if you from now on uh, want to spend your money, think about it. What you're spending on a new car? Will that car make money for you or not? If you're going to spend it on renovation, will that make money or not for you? If you're spending it on travel or uh, clothes or things that uh, you want to spend, sometimes it's necessary for your happiness and pleasure you spend it. But the rich always spend the money for travel, for luxury, for nice cars and stuff from the passive income they make from their businesses not from their active income. If you see you're making it from your active income, means that's a liability, unless it's used to generate income. So think about everything. If you want to buy a new piece of equipment for your clinic, will that make money or it's just some convenience for your clients, something nice to have? Are you paying for a new software for your computer? You know, getting a new laptop, a computer for your office, Will that computer make money for you? Is it worth to spend a thousand dollar, two thousand dollar on that? Will that make money or not? I always look at that and I always think about the potential of that uh, spending money on making money. And a lot of time I just cut it. A lot of time I cut it. I see it's not reasonable. It's uh, not necessary. You can continue operating. Uh, that is money that you spend maybe increase your com convenience and comfort a little bit more and I see it's not worth it. This is how you 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 like bring yourself up. I made all the mistakes myself. I spent money on you know toys. I had two Porsches. I had a BMW convertible. I had a Mercedes. I had a Jaguar. I had a Range Rover. I had all, all those things uh, uh, as well. I spent a lot of money. The first time I made a million dollar, I spent it all on fun. It was a big mistake. The second time I became a millionaire, I lost it in a bad business decision, uh, investing in a clinic that didn't work good and I lost the money. And the third time I became smart and I kept everything and I decided to, uh, to not spend the money on things that do not generate money for me. And that changed my life. That really, really changed my life. And I wish you do, uh, you do the same as well. You have no idea how powerful this is for you to understand what is asset, what is liability, and use your money as much as you can for assets. And if you spend it on liabilities, ensure that that liability, the money you spend is coming from assets. Rich people buy nice cars too, but they buy it from the income they get from rentals, from uh, other businesses. If they lose that car, or they sell it, or they give it away, or that car loses its uh, price and uh, depreciate a lot, they, it still makes no difference for them because the asset that they had, that they used that money to buy this, it still is generating income, income for them. And this is, uh, this is the beauty of it. And uh, you should always, always 
follow this. Think about where your uh, expense is going. Like what is it bringing for you? Uh, knowing the difference between asset and liabilities is just a great way to gradually build your empire, to build your wealth, to become rich and successful, to become millionaire. It is becoming millionaire is a, a lot easier than you think. It requires you to dream big, to take action, to to uh, do things every day to bring you uh, closer to the goal that you set. Uh, persevere, be passionate, and a few other things. But it is doable and. Uh, protecting your money, uh, not losing it on liabilities and things that do not do not uh, bring you income. Uh, it's uh, it's just not a good way to become wealthy. Once you make the money, if it's extra, you done your investment. You uh, you know I, I recommend to my students 10 percent of their income has to go on the investment, 10 percent to charities, and whatever uh, left like one to three percent on improving their brain and continuing education programs. And if you are left extra through passive income, uh, in, you know spend it what you want, but do not. Try your best not to spend the money you make from your brand, from your active work. Uh, those money is best to spend on things that can, on assets, things that can bring you money. What, I know you need to start your life with active job using your muscles and brown uh, to make money. This is normal as a new graduate, as a new business person you have to do that that's fine that is understandable but the smart business people gradually use the money they make from their muscles and invested in passive incomes in businesses in real estate in stocks in uh, uh, you know other other type of investments things that can generate little by little more money it's exponential it is not linear Passive income, unlike active income, is usually exponential, like a log curve, while uh, active income is usually linear. If you work for somebody, for example, and you, uh, or you, you do the technical work of your job, be you're a manual osteopath, uh, and uh, not my graduates, you make $90,000 per year. My graduates in Canada make over $150,000 a year. And you make ninety thousand dollar, and that's you're working full time. That's your income. That is a linear way. You cannot grow it suddenly by a lot because there is a time limit in your day, and you can go over that. You can work a little more hours, but you graduated a little more in a linear way. Passive income is different. Once you buy assets, they accumulate, and suddenly what you assets you have in one year compared to five years, they don't have a linear growth. They have a log growth, logarithmic growth, and suddenly you see you're making more and more and more money. And I tell to my students, when your passive income surpasses your active income, then you are truly wealthy okay the, the, you should aim always for that for your passive uh, income to surpass uh, your active income then you become rich and successful then you can get your business to work for you then you can treat patients if you want for the fun of it and get paid for it but even if you don't want to treat you have other people working there offering the services that your clinic offers then your business becomes an asset for you meaning it passively generates income for you with or without you and that means you have arrived that means you are rich you're successful and you're wealthy and that would make me so happy and uh, I want to share this knowledge with you. I'm grateful to God. Thank you, God. I came 34 years ago. I was homeless. I slept in shelters in Canada. As a refugee, I came. Uh, and my first job was uh, uh, washing dishes for $3.75 an hour. And now 
Uh, I'm a multimillionaire. I get Prime Minister of Canada, my friend, Honorable Justin Trudeau, invite me for breakfast. Uh, always send me email updating me with what's happening in Canada. Uh, and, uh, you know, I live, uh, I can get to live in Naples, beautiful Naples. I live now in Panama. I have a beachfront home Monday to Friday and beachfront. On weekends, I have a place on top of the mountain, 3,000 feet on top of the mountain. I do yoga there, taekwondo, meditation. There's no human being there. And, uh, you know, I'm grateful. I'm blessed. God has given me abundance in my life. And uh, God has provided this abundance for you as well. Look at all this beauty. Look at everything. Look at those bougainvilleas over there. If you see the bougainvilleas over there, number one plant, uh, flower, my flowers, number one favorite flowers, they are beautiful. God has given you so much love and so much beauty and so much abundance. You just have to go get your share. That's what you have to do. You have, we have an old saying that uh, says, God said, I provide it, but you have to go and take it. This is an old saying, uh, and you have to get off your buttock, your gluteus maximus, and do the job. You cannot just sit down and dream, I want to be a millionaire, millionaire, and uh, then go have a beer and uh, have uh, bad foods and spend your time talking about sports with your friends and hoping to get rich and successful. It will not happen. You have to work at it. At least at the minimum, do three things every day that brings you closer to your goal. But if you're a new graduate, 80% of your time must be spent on marketing and bringing clients. That's how you grow. You have to take action. You cannot just dream. It is a, I have a coat of arms I designed, Pugol family coat of arms. And our logo, our family logo is dream big, take action yes you need to dream big but also you have to take action taking action is very very important you cannot just dream most of the people stop at the level of dreaming big they don't take action that is why there is less than one percent of people who are rich and wealthy those one person is not they they're not lucky i always tell everybody success is not an accident Rarely you find somebody who, through inheritance or winning lottery, uh, b become rich. M almost all people, majority of them, become rich and wealthy and millionaires through owning business. That's how in people in Canada and North America in the U U.S. become wealthy through business. Means they worked at it. Nobody comes and gives it to you. You have to go and get your share. You have to do that. And for that, you have to know all the business laws and protocols and tips and know how to apply them. And this is what I teach to my students. It's not an accident. It's not just by luck that my students make 60,000 more than other manual osteopaths in Canada. It's because of the knowledge they receive. No other schools teaches that in anywhere in the world. The practitioners, the teachers, they are practitioners, clinicians. They don't want to teach things that make the students successful in business because they don't want to create competition for themselves. We have no problem. Our school is non-profit. I don't need money from osteopathy. I was a multimillionaire before osteopathy. I don't even take one dollar from my schools. Uh, in actually in. From National Academy of Osteopathy, it's for me illegal to take uh, even one dollar as a profit because it's a non-profit school. I can't even take one dollar off. I don't need this money. I don't look at my students as competition. That's why I teach them everything I know. I knew long time ago if if they become wealthy, others will be attracted to manual osteopathy. This is how we grow. This is how we have so many students. Where else a high school graduate can go in one year getting a diploma in manual osteopathy and make $150,000. There is no other profession like that. There, and with great job satisfaction rate. Manual osteopaths in Canada have 98% job satisfaction rate. More than any other health professions. They have 97% patient loyalty rate. Uh, 
Family physicians have 75%, and then chiropractor, physiotherapist, massage therapist, around 60%. They, are, they have the number one patient loyalty rates, loyalty rates in Canada, meaning once a patient becomes, uh, comes to see them, they remain with that manual aspect for life. Where they can get that? This is how we grow osteopathy, through science, through business, through applying step-by-step -step repetitive protocols. I am a scientist and I use scientific principles to teach my students so they can replicate it. I made sure everything is a step-by-step -step protocol so they can replicate it. I took the guesswork out and made it so simple that a high school graduate can replicate the success of other manual osteopaths to become rich, successful and wealthy. I did not want them to guess what to do. I provided a step-by-step -step instruction for them what to do. And when they apply it, even though it's not guaranteed because it's a business, a business is not guaranteed, but the chance of success is a lot more. And you can do that as well. You have to know about business. You have to apply the principles of the uh, business. Otherwise, you will not become successful. And I can tell you, I was homeless here and poor in Canada. I am now a multimillionaire and I have money, financial freedom to do what I want. And this is a lot better. Thanks to God. I love you, God. Thank you. I am grateful so much for all this abundance. This is what happens. Nobody taught me. I learned myself. I saw other rich people. I studied them, I copied them, I read about them, I read all the business books they had at chapters at that time in Toronto. I, I studied day in, in, day out. I still read every day, every day, non-stop. I don't need to, but I do it because I'm a student for life and I want to always get better and better. It's not, it's not, it's not hard. But it's not just you sit on your bum and you're hoping to get rich. You need to do activity. The same with the sports. You want to be a super athlete. You want to be good at uh, any sport. If you practice a few hours in that sport every day, most likely you become good at it. But people do that. People spend a few hours drinking every day or watching TV and they become good at it. But imagine what they can do, what they can achieve if they spend this money on learning about business. And a lot of health practitioners make mistakes. They study just about the field, the clinical knowledge, which is good. They must do that and we recommend always to our students to do that and they should do that. But they also should spend every day about learning about business, reading business books, reading business journals, talking to others about business. Your brain is flexible. It has neuroplasticity. When you focus on something for too long, it grows in that direction. You focus on business, you become good in business. You focus on sport, you become good in sports. You focus on drinking and eating bad food, you become obese and uh, have liver problem and other conditions. This is the fact of life. You can't go against that. Albert Einstein says that the definition of insanity is to do the same thing but expect a different result. You cannot just go waste your time and expect to be rich and successful. It will not work. That's it for today. You hear the birds? I love this life. I love this life. Beauty everywhere. Beauty surrounds me everywhere I go. It's just so beautiful. Nature is so beautiful. Nature is the source of my creativity. I sit down every day looking for an hour at the trees and the flowers in my backyard and just think and I just think about how to improve my life and uh, when the wind blows the trees sing for me they make music for me it's beautiful wherever you are I hope you have a happy healthy wealthy day I love you all 
थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग दिस वीडियो एंड गॉड ब्लेस नमस्ते